The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel written by John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The readings today speak of a beautiful love, the beautiful love of God. It is this love that St. Augustine stumbled upon. He discovered God's love, and that changed his life. He was always running away from God. He was an unbeliever. And uh, it was only his mother, St. Monica, who was day to day, every day, praying for him, crying for him. When St. Augustine discovered the love of God, he wrote in his book we call Confessions, Late have I loved you, O beauty ever ancient, ever new, late have I loved you. You called, you shouted, and you broke through my deafness. You flashed, you shone, and you removed my blindness. You touched me, and my heart longs for your peace. That is a beautiful experience of God's love in Augustine. And that is what we find in the readings that we have today. In fact, the readings also tell us something about the temporality of love, the time. This is not just now. This has something to do with a very long past. God has been loving us since time immemorial. There is that past. And when we discover this love, it is a task to be done. It is present. It is a present task. And at the same time, it points to something in the future. So this love has something to do with our past, with the present, and with the future. We can discover this in the readings that we have today. In the Gospel, this is the last conversation of Jesus with his disciples. And it's fitting that we read, in, we read this Gospel as we are on the last week of Easter, just before we close the celebrations of Easter, we are reminded about that past. The last conversation of Jesus and his disciples before he died, after the supper, he was telling them something, and that was the great love of God. And that was the new commandment he was inaugurating by his death. And what, that, what was that new commandment? A new commandment of love. That's the past. The first reading tells us something about the present. What happened after the resurrection? The apostles, the disciples of the Lord, proclaimed him. They went out of Jerusalem into the whole world. That is why you hear those places in the first reading. That's Asia. And they have reached up to Antioch and established the new church there. So we see, even in the Acts of the Apostles, we, the scholars tell us that the, the writer of this book is Luke. The story of the church is already growing. 
and it has reached beyond Jerusalem, beyond Israel, to Asia. And that is how we learned about the faith. That is why the story of God's beautiful love is not only in the past. It is happening in the present. This is the work of God. This is a work of His love, our gathering today, this church in Surabaya. And it's not only about the past, the present task. If we are daunted by trials of everyday life, if sometimes we lose hope, the readings point to us the future. And what is the future? We read in the second reading from the book of Revelation. And it tells us a vision of John. The vision of a new heaven and a new earth. That is the future. And it tells us in that future the sea will be no more. It talks about the sea. This is an image. The sea symbolizes difficult life. If you travel by sea, you don't know if the weather changes, the journey suddenly becomes dangerous and difficult. So the sea stands for a difficult journey of the church. But the book of Revelation tells us in the new heavens and the new earth, the sea was no more. If that is an image difficult to understand, John further supplies us with a very intimate image. And this is what we can truly understand. There, in that new heavens and new earth, God will wipe every tear from their eyes. That's not difficult to understand. That is an image of God's love. Think of God as standing in front of you, in front of all of us, and He will be in front of your face, wiping tears from your eyes. That is God's love. And this is not only discovered in the book of Revelation. If we look at scriptures, even in the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah already wrote about this. In chapter 25 of the book of the prophet Isaiah, verse 6, we read, The Lord of hosts will prepare a feast for all peoples on this mountain. He will destroy the burial shroud. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face and remove His people's disgrace from the whole earth. On that day, it will be said, Look, this is our God. We have waited for Him, and He has saved us. This is the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. My dear friends, as we meet the Lord in the Eucharist, as we listen to His words proclaimed to us, may we, like the prophet Isaiah, may we, like the inspiration of the book of Revelation, know God, accept Him in our hearts and in our lives, as someone who is not so far away from us, but as someone who will stand before us and wipe away our tears.